Alright, so we're going to get started. I work with um, Denise Hernandez. She's the Chief Operating Officer at, I mean, Okay, I'm operations. VP <laughs> of operations. Operations, that's fine. Sorry about that. No. Um, yeah, and we're going to talk about member engagement, um, kind of uh, how we built a strong work culture at Cooperative throughout the years. And um, he's just going to share a little uh, history behind this picture, real quick. Yeah, so JC's going to get us started, but before he gets us started, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about this picture. Every quarter we have an old staff meeting with the, with the office staff. We have about 100 office staff members right now, and we have 2,200 home care workers. Um, JC and Linda spoke a little bit about what happened with our sister company having to close, right? And a lot of people were nervous about that because ICS was the funnel of cases for us, right? So what's going to happen now that ICS left? So we started to hear a lot of rumors about layoffs, about people who are afraid of losing their jobs. So in this last quarterly me meeting, what happened in September was we got everybody together. Um, before we met, we sent out a survey and we told people, be honest, talk to us about what are the questions you have in your mind? What are you nervous about? And I think we got about 70 responses. And by the time JC kind of tailored those responses, it was about 32 questions that we had. So if we said, okay, we have 32 questions now that we have to go back and answer. So we did it in this meeting and we shared like the information. And then at the same time, we took an opportunity to break people up into different groups and ask them several questions about what else can we be doing out there to market our services, right? And how can we keep the clients? How can we enhance the customer service um, experience for people? So, I mean, we got a list like this now that we're gonna break up into different committees and have people head them. And I think this presentation, I just wanted to start this off with this little story because this is all about like engaging your workers, right? So that we could be around for another 100 years because we don't want our doors to close, right? Thank you, Dee. Um, so we're gonna start with a quick, just pop, uh, if you have any ideas of or what you think organizational um, culture means. Um, anyone has any organizational um, culture means? Um, anyone has any, yeah? A set of values that um, all employees um, adhere to and believe in. Yes. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Here are the set of values that everyone adheres to, how we interact. So, uh, I guess I'm going on how we support each other and um, the community that makes that Yes, how we support each other and the community that makes that Awesome. Yeah? Yeah. Um, a number of us that Wait. probably work in the organization where it constantly felt like it was competition. Okay. In, Every conversation is kind of offended and I'm listening for what I disagree with rather than what I agree with. And I think these organizations that you know, strive for agreement and let everybody have a, a, a say to uh, add to the positive. Okay. Everyone has the same. Um, so um, we have the definition here by Sherm. That medicine. Um, it says the organi organizational culture consists of shared beliefs and values established by leaders and then communicated and reinforced through various methods, ultimately shaping the employee perceptions, behaviors, and understandings. Um, and that we got that from the Society of Human Resource Management, Sherm. Um, it's very important to note that um, organizational culture and leadership you know, starts from lead from the top. And it has to be set, uh, the president has to be set from leadership and it eventually will trickle down down to all of our um, workers. So, um, you know, cooperative, if you don't around, hold up, you want to take a picture? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> we can share this presentation too. After. All right, cool. Um, so we have uh, a couple of factors that help contribute to CACA strong organization um, culture. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about our open door policy, um, how we have a supportive environment, uh, coaching skills that we implement, uh, engaging opportunities, 
empowering and learning, and we always can't forget about having fun. Exactly. Um, so we have our open door policy. Um, since its inception in empowering and learning, and we always can't forget about having fun. Exactly. Um, so we have our open door policy. Um, since its inception in 1985, cooperative has always had an open door policy. 35 years later, we still have this open door policy. It's something that we cherish and we really take seriously. Um, and it translates into uh, valuing and um, really um, cherishing the work that our workers do. And we know, they know that on Fridays when everyone comes in for certain events, we always have info fairs, we have uh, resource fairs, we have health fairs, we have a flea market. So all these different things that happen on Fridays as ways to um, have them come into the office. But at the same time, when they care for these resources, they can go into anyone at any moment and speak with them. You know, on Fridays, we always know that whatever we're doing, we put it aside, and if someone comes and speaks to us, we address them immediately. You know, we take the time um, to speak with them because we know that they uh, do a lot for us, and we value their time, and we, we want to let them know that we appreciate them for what they do. Um, so we will let them know they didn't do something. Can I mention something? Um, so on Fridays, I think. We are up to like maybe 90, 95% of our workers have direct deposit. But we have their stubs in the office. So on Fridays, we can have anywhere from like 250 to like 500 people come through the office to pick up their work stubs. Because those are, we also communicate with work uh, through the stubs. So if they have no services, they get phone calls, but they also get notified with a, with, a, um, with a paper yeah. attached to their stubs. Yeah. So we see a lot of people on Fridays, and we're starting to see more on Mondays as well. So those that can't get into the office on Fridays come in on Mondays. Yeah, and the way we are set up our office when we moved into a new building, uh, we were lucky enough to work with the architect, with the um, developer. So we um, designed the layout specifically for our purposes right here. Um, so if you see, it's very open. Um, there's no like walls or anything like that. And, Every uh, station has a cushioned seat next to it that pulls out so that, you know, whenever somebody comes to speak to you, you can pull it out and then you have the space that was in the corner. Right, right. um, all of our VPs and uh, offices are uh, floor to ceiling windows, so the wall is not a solid wall, so it's glass. Um, so that way you can see what's going on. Somebody's having a meeting, somebody comes to the door, knocks on the window, hey, how you doing? And then we stop, what are you doing? We interact with that person and we, you know, just catch up. Sometimes it's just a simple hi. Sometimes they have um, issues that they want to address or bring to us to our attention and we help them with those things as well. So it's something that we're very, very proud of. We had the open door policy from the inception with 12 people. Now, 35 years later, over 2,000 people, we still have that open door policy. Wow. Um, so the next thing that we have is a supportive environment. Um, cooperative is also a training um, facility. We um, are licensed to train home care workers in English and in Spanish. Um, and it's a free uh, training. It's at no cost to them, thanks to PHI and their um, uh, funding. Thank you. Um, so yeah, so from the very beginning, when somebody comes in with the um, interest of becoming a home care worker, they um, are sort of screened through, um, we call it, um, no, before the interview. Um, oh, orientation. Thank you. We have an orientation for that. Um, it's an open house. It's an open house. Thank you. Oh. Uh, Lynn needs to um, do that before doing the community engagement. Um, so we had an open house for people that are interested who have no idea what it is. All they know is a free training and you can get work afterwards. Um, so in this open house, we pretty much lay down the, the, you know, the facts of what it is to be a home care worker, from the nitty gritty to the great things about being um, a, a caregiver. Um, and at that point, some people sort of opt out because they know that this is not for them. Um, and we give them a little to test to test for like soft skills, you know, compassionate people, because we want to make sure that it is a free uh, training. We want the right person in the right seats to be a home care worker. We want somebody to think about this as a job. We want somebody to think about this as a career and someone who has passion for, for people. Right. Um, so from the very beginning, you know, we have that open house, we screen the people out, and then after the open house, we invite them, the, the ones we select, to come back for an interview. In this interview, they meet with our uh, workforce development um, 
coordinators, and in this interview, they have one-on-one -on -one interaction with them, and they talk about um, their personal lives, any struggles, any kind of issues that they may have that may pro um, prohibit them from completing the program successfully. So it's housing issues, domestic violence, any kind of issues childcare. that they may have, childcare. Um, and they work with other agencies to give them the support in order to be um, successful in the program. Um, so from the very beginning, we're very supportive. During the training, we have a nurse and an associate instructor who is also a caregiver, maybe 10, 15 years you know, down the line. They're very seasoned and they, they, we promote from within as well. Um, so they have grown, and right here there's a couple of, uh, she's one of the ones, and then Jeanette's a nurse. Um, instructor. So there's always an associate instructor there who's always supportive and making sure that they understand um, the material. Our training program is adult based, so it's not, you know, we pop in a DVD or have them read a book and then that's it. You know, it's very hands on. Um, they practice through each other and they have a lab that they can practice on and they can go do the, these things after the training or during breaks as well. So they have the support before the training, during the training. And then they finish the training program, and then they finish. I mean, they finish the training program, and then they go out into the into the field, and then it's just them and the client by themselves. That could be a little overwhelming. So that's why we implemented the peer mentor program, where we have peer mentors go out, and they give them that one-on-one um, -on -one sort of um, support in the house. And if there are any issues, that peer mentors will go out and give them the support um, after they um, begin working with us as well. Good question. Oh, I just wanted to, because uh, this used to be confusing to me, because you have this screening process where you would ask them about, like, you have child care, you have transportation. And of course, when we're hiring somebody, we can't ask a lot of those questions. Um, but you are hiring them, or you're bringing them into a training program. Mm -hmm. So that's why you can you can do that. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so we, we have the supportive environment instilled in them from the very beginning. And they know that a cooperative, they're always going to have the support that they need no matter what. Okay, so Ka Tasha spoke earlier about coaching skills. For the last 15 years, we decided to introduce coaching to CHCA, to both our office staff members and our home care workers. So coaching is just a set of communication skills that's going to help you build your relationships, right? And have a more effective dialogue with people, discussion. So anyone that gets hired at CHCA and works in the office has to go to a two-day two, two training program, two days. And then our home care workers, we can't afford to take them out for two full days, so what we do in their four-week training program, we have a three-hour session that talks about communication skills. We talk about listening, right, because we all sometimes think that we're great listeners, but some of the filters come out, so we talk about those filters. What are they? Daydreaming, right? Um, judging people. We talk about asking open-ended questions in order to get curious, right? Because sometimes we jump to the gum and we want to resolve problems. And it's not about resolving the problem yet, it's about getting curious and finding out what's going on for the person. We talk about self-awareness because a lot of people start judging folks. So if a worker calls out two or three times, right? She's irresponsible. It's not about she's irresponsible, it's about let's see what's going on for her. So we teach our folks to kind of get curious, ask those open questions. Tasha and both Karen spoke earlier about pulling back. Sometimes we're frustrated, we don't listen because we have our side of the story, but we don't want to listen to the other side of the story. How do you pull back when you have those real emotions? We talk about personality styles. I'm an introvert, JC's an extrovert. What does that mean when we're working together, right? How do we communicate? How do we respect that? So those are the type of things, the conflict styles too, right? There's some of us that like to accommodate, and there's some of us that like to avoid. What is that about, right? And how does that impact the job? So we do a lot of work around the coaching, and then we have a coaching sustainability committee that meets and does booster sessions twice a year. And the booster sessions are to reinforce those skills that you learned two days. So there's a lot of work that goes into this, because we really want people to practice these skills, not only with our workers, but with each other. And we've heard that those, work, those skills also go home, right? You can practice it with your loved ones, with your kids especially, <laughs> right? 
engagement opportunities, OMG, we have a lot of them. So we're also unionized. I don't know if a lot of people know that. And in 2007, we created a labor management. What does that mean? Um, we have a committee that meets that um, has worker owners, has union delegates that are worker owners, that have union representatives, and also has management, right? And through, the, through that labor management committee, we created other committees, a health care committee, a morale committee. Terrell was talking about the happiness committee yesterday. Ours is the morale, um, a health committee, we had a child care committee. So we try to do things that we know that are gonna help the workers. Um, in the morale committee, we created a flea market. So our worker owners that sell jewelry, that sell shoes, that sells makeup, has an opportunity to come to the office on the last Friday of each month and yeah, and sell their products, right? Then we have a, a social with the president. So this was with an ice cream social, with different themes to have the opportunity to let workers come in and talk to the president and ask questions about what's going on, right? Um, we have work all day for the last four years. We to celebrate work ownership and to educate people. You know, because sometimes people come in, they're a worker owner, but they don't know what a co-op is. So we take an opportunity to kind of go over what are the seven principles of a cooperative and like educate folks on that. Um, today, we're here, we're, we're celebrating Home Care Appreciation Day at CHCA. Every year we do this in November where the workers can come in from eight in the morning to six o'clock in the afternoon and we have food for them. We have breakfast, we have fruit, we have sandwiches in the afternoon and, it's a, and, and the people that are serving are the office staff. Mm -hmm. So it's an opportunity to say thank you guys. Thank you because we know your work is hard out there and we appreciate and we value you. So today we're kind of missing that. <laughs> and um, and each, each year we have a Okay. And then we also do health fairs. So we partner up with 1199. They come in twice a year. They bring in social workers. They bring in doctors. They bring in a crew of like 30 people and they do like cholesterol screening. They do sugar. And, you know, believe it or not, in those opportunities, we found people that we've had to kind of put in a cab or like take them, right? and because they've had their screening so high and they're like, they're sick and they don't even know it and they're going to work. Right. So we've had those opportunities as well, as well as, well as a, uh, the blood drive. Uh, oh, yes. You want to get? <laughs> yeah. Huh? Yeah. Uh, yeah, so um, another thing that we do is empowering them. That was my slide. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, can, I can talk about the... It's okay, it's okay. Uh, so we do a lot of work well, with our workers to help educate them, right? One of the things that we did this year is that we um, had to recertify as a B Corp. And in doing so, in order to certify as a B Corporation, we had to um, modify our articles of incorporation to fit the language in order to um, uh, be able to get certification for the B, um, B Corp. Um, but we couldn't just change our worker owners vote on it and we had to have a majority in order to make those changes happen. Um, so we had, a, we picked like two Fridays um, where we just blasted them with information on what it is to be a B Corporation, um, what, it, what are the benefits of being a B Corporation. Um, and what were articles of incorporation? Exactly, what, what are the articles as well. Um, and the changes specifically that we were looking to change. Um, so here's some pictures of them. Actually, you know, we had a boat ballot. We made it like a boat day. We had little stickers where it said, I voted today. Um, you know, we were trying to make it a whole theme about it. Um, and engaging them, we were educating them um, at the same time making it like a fun thing. Um, we had videos of B corporations, people talking about their different B corporations in English and in Spanish. Um, so it was a way for them to understand what it is, but at the same time engaging them and empowering them through learning as well. Um, we other things that we did, like Denise was saying, on um, uh, Worker Ownership Day. Um, we had events um, where we would come in for them, and right here they're playing uh, cooperative bingo. So we thought of an idea of you know making a bingo game 
where you have the seven principles of a cooperative and then you talk about them, right? Because a lot of times we um, we sometimes gloss over these things, but our, our workers, we want to empower them and have them really fully understand what those principles are and how we um, do them on a daily basis as well. We also um, got some cheeses from Cabot Cheese. So we had a cheese and crackers and like something to drink for them so that they could come. And what we really noticed is that there were people that loved the bingo. And we were playing the bingo like every other hour, and there were workers that stood like there for like three hours <laughs> waiting because they they played, but they wanted to continue playing. And we gave like little gifts, like stuff from like the ninety nine cent store, like you know four three four dollars, and people appreciated that, you know, when they won. And you know, and they didn't want to leave, and we were happy that they didn't want to leave. So. Hmm? Okay, and then just maybe um, about. Six months or seven months ago, we created a Joy at Work committee, right? Um, and we had conversations with people saying, what matters to you? When you're at your job, what, what is it that's important to you, right? So the uh, little suns that you see are the bright spots. Those are what indicates what's important. And they talked about engagement. They talked about being a worker only. They talked about the work that they do here for the workers. And then we also talked about what are those pebbles in your shoes, right? So what gets in the way for you of having a good day here at CHCA in your job? And we had, you know, we had people that came out honestly and said, these are the things that bother me. And one of the pebbles that we're currently working on is bridging the gaps. So we came from a place, a smaller place where everybody was together. And now we're in three floors and everybody feels disconnected. And there's not enough opportunities for people to engage. So we started to work on that, right? And the next slide will show you some pictures. And this is the happy fun piece. Yeah, yeah JC. <laughs> JC is giving her a dirty look up there. Do you see that? Yeah. <laughs> He's a real Yankee fan and she bothers him. She put on some Red Sox stuff. <laughs> That's Rebels are our HR coordinator. So that, that, we need to look back on We have rest on days on Wednesdays and Thursdays. Um, we can come in, um, you know, uh, business casual. And we decided in order to in engage the floors together, you know, to um, merge the gaps, uh, we decided to have like a jersey theme. Like bring your jersey, wear your jersey, wear your team drive. And everyone uh, wore, you know, their, their team jerseys. A lot of Yankee fans in New York, you know, a couple of fans here and there. Particularly JC. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then we had a couple of Red Sox fans out there. Um, so we, we made it a fun thing, you know, it was all in fun. Um, but it's something to add, because you would never think that, you know, this person was a, a sports fan, and all of a sudden they come in decked out in, in sports gear, and they're like, oh, okay, let's talk about it. Like, oh, we're both the same fans. Um, so we opened a lot of doors for us to um, engage and communicate with people that you never, normally wouldn't on a daily basis. Um, for Halloween this year, we also did a theme across the uh, across the floors where we did like a, a competition where like you would uh, decorate your department and uh, we had PHI come through the floors and sort of be the judge. Um, and you know, people weren't allowed. We had like a haunted house where people were uh, dressed up and like it, it really felt like a haunted house. Like we like the we did a tour. Yeah. Tour. The ladies came down and we were like, this does not look like cooperative at all. And it, was, it was a lot of fun. Um, we also did, like, at the same time, we did, like, a, a Great Gatsby murder mystery kind of thing um, amongst us. And it was, it was a lot of fun because, you know, people who you normally wouldn't think are outgoing or outspoken people were shining, you know, they were going out there and, like, really getting into character and doing all these things. Yeah, it was like a half an hour production and then you had to figure out who was the murderer. So it was really cool. It was really cool. And then we had a lunchtime um, fun and games where we brought like Uno, Dominoes, where we brought uh, checkers, where we even bought a Nintendo game. And we said, okay, from 12 to 3, whoever wants to come have their lunch, bring your lunch, and we're going to be in the conference room, and this is what we're going to be doing for three hours. And we bought some snacks for people, like cookies and cakes, which everybody always loves. And then um, this was the first one. This was the sip and paint. So we had 50 people come and we converted like our cafeteria had two artists come and like create an elephant and we were painting and sitting while we were painting. Um, so that was what started us off with this joy at work. Mm -hmm. um, so we've done a lot, um, you know, in, in order to sustain the culture that we have here at Cooperative. Um, 
And you know, in every, it's important to know that in every one of these events, we have senior leadership that's always present. You know, not all of them may be there at the same time, but throughout the day, they will always make a point to be there and to show that they're they're part of it as well. You know, they're not locked up in their office, too busy to do anything. They're, they'll come out and say, "Hey, how's it going?" They'll stop by, maybe play a game or two, and then go back. But at least they're they're demonstrating that they're they're part of this culture. Well, and they participated in the sip and paint. Yeah, so now um, we're gonna do a little exercise, a little breakout activity, everyone's in groups. Um, and let me go out. Okay, so what we want you to do in your tables is to, um, discuss these questions, right? Thinking about your workplace, how would you describe your organizational culture? I know that some of us are starting up and we don't have the workplace yet, but in thinking about that, how would you like your culture to look like? How would you like your culture to be? Uh, what is your organization doing to develop or maintain that culture? Um, if you feel like there is no defined culture in your workplace, what could be done to start developing a culture that everyone could buy into, right? And then if, is there anything your organizational culture that you would like to change? Why? And what steps would you take to make the changes? And uh, we don't necessarily have to go through each questions with just like maybe themes or conversations that were happening at your table. Anything that's put out. So we have, um, in, at Circle of Life, we have this extra room in our office that has really just been like a copy room with a fridge and a microwave. And our administrator was like, oh, we should, we should turn this into a space where people can, can meet and, and be together and hang out. And, Hello. It's really great to hear what you guys do for pay on PaySub Day because we don't all our PaySubs are email or an encrypted email thing, but we do have documentation of services that needs to be turned in on Mondays and Tuesdays. And so hearing some of your ideas kind of got us going, well, hey, we could do that. We could just open it up in that room. We already have an open door policy. We already talk and engage with them, but we don't really have any activities when they're there. So that's, that's something we're, we're looking at now. It's like, oh wow, this is great. This is really a positive thing for us to implement. Oh. So thank you. Cookies go a long way. We like to eat at the HCA. As the geographic barriers, so for instance, in Los Angeles, California, you may have, you know, your office in one place, but you have your home care workers uh, working, you know, have their set hours. So having them to travel, you know, some travel two hours. So to be able to get to the main office can be a challenge. How do you bring them out, you know? They have their set hours or, you know, they, they the feasibility of someone being able to drive just to get to, Someone at our table was actually just talking about um, pop up things. Do you want to tell me about that? Because that's pretty cool. Yeah. Well, so I'm coming to this from a background of organizing in one of the strategies we use were um, pop up events where you would take a, an empty space and you would turn it into anything. We've done coffee shops and museums and uh, galleries. And just basically, people just like find whatever they can and lend it. Um, and then you see, in our case, we kind of saw what's stuff and um, just a way that people can kind of set up and get engaged and find new ways of. So you can have that in your area, yeah. closer, more in a more yeah. central location. Yeah, maybe meeting people halfway. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think it kind of ties into what they said. I mean, like, for us, we want to see more community engagement. And each one, okay, so we live in Madison, but we're like all over with uh, surrounding areas of like, as large workers. And so, like, maybe um, like post the workers specifically in that area, like post. Um, an activity or an, uh, an activity where we all kind of support them and engage with their community um, in each one of our areas. So, like, some very for us and just different um, surrounding cities. So, being part of that community, letting us see, let our workers see we engage with their support their community and um, them. And then also, it's kind of the marketing too, it shows the community who we are. Yeah. 
Any other discussions? Um, we did the first one was um, what do we want our what do, what do we want our co-op to look like culturally, and we went around and we have people saying that we want it to be diverse. We want our individual values to be um, shared with the rest of the co-op as well. Um, we want we like that pre-screening one where we pre-screen could ask them questions to see if they actually are invested into this industry or not. So because like you guys said, you can't ask that into the interview, so that's pretty awesome. We're gonna take that and run with it. Um, <laughs> growth and career advancement and we want um safe and a safe space where we feel like our concerns are being heard. And um, we want the place to be family orientated because I have a 12 year old and I always bring her to our meetings and stuff. So I wanted our space to be that open because in this field, most of us, like 90% are women and women are going to have kids. So the only <laughs> right, that we have the open space that's family orientated. And lastly, of course, we want it to be an open space where you could express yourself, whether you like to dance, we're gonna have dance off, if you like to play games, the game yeah. that you guys did. So just so you could feel like you're expressing yourself with those that you work with and care for. Yeah, the dance sounds good. We did karaoke also, and that was like a lot of fun. <laughs> Some of us don't know how to sing, but we did it anyway. <laughs> for 16 years. I started there in 2003. And I said, this is the place where I want to retire. And I think I came from a non-for-profit where it was just like work, 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 and there was no, um, there was no value to like what people were doing. And I was there for eight years. So when I came to CHCA, I was like, whoa, this is different, you know? And, and, um, and I think there's so much of us, there's so many of us that work towards, because this is a lot of work, right? Because you need people on top of this, and I think the hardest part is sustainability, because you start something and you don't want it to like, okay, you introduce it by month or two and then it goes away, right? You want it to stay around, and I think that's the hard part. Like, how do you maintain this and how do you sustain this? So it's just not like an idea of month, and people really buy into it. But I think we really have good people at CHCA that understand that and that are always, you know, both the office staff and the home care workers. Because when the home care workers, when we have these events, sometimes they're the ones that staff it. They're in the tables giving out like the one page financial statements and like telling people this is where we're at, you know? They're in the tables like encouraging folks to sign up, you know? We take them to orientation and we let them share their story. So, um, Everybody kind of pitches in to like keep this momentum alive. And then but you'll hear sometimes we have people that when we started it was twelve workers and they say, Oh, we've gotten so big, you know, and we have people there that work twenty five years as a caregiver. Um, and we've gotten so big and we've kind of lost that mm -hmm. that closeness, the ones that really know each other, but it's hard when you're twenty two hundred, right? <laughs> to kind of keep that like string along and like manage and like have people, but we try to kind of work at that and do the best that we can. And I, you know, and I truly like value the people that I work with and the people that work for us and the organization. It's a great organization to work in. Mm -hmm. Any last thoughts? Yes. <laughs> Any questions? I think we have like two minutes. Yep. Yeah, this is a showstopper. <laughs> have you thought about spinning off? In other words, if 2,500 people mm. is becoming harder to manage and to keep it personal, et cetera, et cetera. Have you thought about making sister organizations? No. And I'll tell you why. I grew up in a town with 1,500 people, and I'm going, 2,500 <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I think, I think um, it just, it's going to take a little bit more work. Um, I think if we split into two, it's going to have to 
hit the reset button all over again. Um, I think it, it's just a, a matter of um, being more on top of it and, and making sure that it's something that they get accustomed to. Like they know on Fridays they're going to be here. We're going to have things for them. So it's something that it, it's instilled through repetition. And the more we do it, the more we, we stay on top of these things. It's, it's going to, I think things are going to start to improve. And even they can come up with different yeah. ideas. How many consumers are you serving? Uh, about 1,100. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.